Plagiarism, Paraphrasing, and Patch Writing, Using Sources Responsibly, a Guide for Grad Students. Plagiarism is a term that refers to a variety of academic infractions ranging from the careless or incorrect use of sources to deliberate cheating by the theft of intellectual property. According to Georgia Southern, a range of activities can qualify as plagiarism. Plagiarism includes, but is not limited to, the offering of another's work, whether verbatim or paraphrased, as original material without identifying the source in an academic paper, directly quoting the words of others without using quotation marks or indented format to identify them, resubmitting work previously submitted without appropriate or accurate citation or credit and or without explicit approval from the instructor, Use of materials prepared by another person or agency engaged in the selling of term papers or other academic materials. Although most students would never consider deliberate cheating of the sort described in this last bullet point, they still may find the other rules governing plagiarism to be difficult to keep straight. The problem tends to increase with research-based writing. This presentation will help provide you with guidance in navigating the waters of writing with sources. One scholar explained, although most students can define plagiarism acceptably, taking someone else's words or ideas and using them as one's own, they often have a difficult time applying that definition in real situations. Does this sound like a problem you've encountered? One student says, everything about plagiarism seems so vague. There are so many exceptions. What may be confusing Robert here is the fact that there is no one correct way to use a quotation or write a paraphrase. Writers even have options on how to introduce material from a source or include material in parenthetical citations. Another student says, if you read a paragraph and summarize it in your own words, I don't feel that's plagiarism. I mean, that's not copying word for word. If you, you know, use a direct quote, you have to, you know, cite it. Gina's words reflect that she shares what may be the most common misunderstanding of students working with sources. They assume that changing the wording of the original source a bit is enough to avoid the accusation of plagiarism. It isn't. When you use material from a source, unless it qualifies as common knowledge, you must either directly quote the author's exact words indicating the quotation with quotation marks or block format, or completely paraphrase by both changing the author's wording and sentence structure. In either case, quoting or paraphrasing, you must document the source of the material with an in-text citation. Jennifer says, in my case, plagiarism was unintentional. I didn't understand the text. Another problem students frequently encounter occurs when they try to use sources containing complex or nuanced arguments along with disciplinary jargon. It may be tempting in such cases to adopt chunks of the author's original prose into your paper, but such a practice frequently crosses the line into plagiarism. Don't use a source until you can clearly explain what the author means to another person. If you can, you're much less likely to plagiarize. In Jennifer's case, she did not mean to break the rules, but she did so unintentionally. Unfortunately, to many academics, ignorance of the law is no excuse. What Jennifer did when she in inadequately paraphrased her source is what many students do when they are struggling to write an academic paper with sources. Composition studies scholar Rebecca Moore Howard realized that most students want to handle sources responsibly, but are often confused by the rules governing plagiarism. 
She identified a coping mechanism such students employ, which she called patch writing. As I describe it, you may recognize the strategy as one you've used yourself. Patch writing is copying from a source text and then deleting some words, altering grammatical structures, or plugging in one-for-one -one synonym substitutes. Has this happened to you? Howard identified several reasons students patch write. For example, students do not understand what they are reading. Often students resort to patch writing when they have not grasped the complexities of the dense academic prose of peer-reviewed journal articles and other academic texts they are expected to use as sources. Another reason is that patch writing can be a gesture of reverence. Howard argued that students admire the language of the source and strive to imitate it, hence they patch write, often while citing the source. Howard also stresses that patch writing is a step in the learning process. Students are attempting to join the academic community by merging their voice with that of the source as a way of collaborating with its language and ideas. Although Howard understands students' motivations, she also warns that patch writing is a transitional writing form. It is never acceptable for final draft academic writing. Academic writers are expected to demonstrate an understanding of the text they cite. One of the ways you can move past the need to patch write is by paraphrasing correctly and completely, rephrasing author's ideas in your own voice while still citing the source. Patch writing, while understandable for students learning how to understand and handle sources, often is identified by prof professors and other knowledgeable readers as plagiarism. Do not rely on patch writing in your papers. In one of her books, Howard explains that early in her career, she gave the following assignment to a class. Here is the assignment she gave. Read a selection and consider its implications not only for a reading of Genesis, but also of Plato's Phaedo. Here is a section from the original source Howard expected her students to use in this assignment. These are the author's exact words. Such story myths are not told for their entertainment value. They provide answers to questions people ask about life, about society, and about the world in which they live. Here are some of, of Howard's students' attempts to use this source in their papers. Specifically, story myths are not for entertainment purposes. Rather, they serve as answers to questions people ask about life, about society, and about the world in which they live. Story myths provide answers to philosophical questions about life, society, and the world. Davidson explains that story myths answer questions people ask about life, about society, and about the world that we live in. The first type of story myths, which are used to explain a principle or answer a question about life, society, and the world. As you can undoubtedly tell, Although none of these samples is exactly like the original, every one of these samples of Howard's students' writing contains unquoted wording that is very close to the original, too close. In her book, Howard includes many more similar examples from the same class. These are only a few. It seems clear that the students were not trying to cheat. After all, they were all using the same source, one that Howard had assigned to the entire class. Several of the students even named Davidson as the source. However, technically, they could be considered guilty of plagiarism. They were patch writing, but patch writing, though understandable, got these students in trouble. 
One tip to avoid patch writing is to make sure that you fully comprehend your sources. A good tactic is to carefully reread your source, preferably several times, and then, putting aside the source, try to paraphrase a section without looking at the text. Then go back and look at the text and compare what you wrote to the original. This technique may help you isolate dif difficult concepts you need to work on. Eventually, you can increase the accuracy of your paraphrasing. Another tactic is to check the professional literature for a review of the source in question. Reading a review or article that refers to or discusses the content of the source may help you comprehend it and write about it with more confidence in your own work. You will decrease the likelihood that you will have to depend on patch writing. Turnitin, a well-known example of plagiarism detection software, has been made available to Georgia Southern University instructors, and they may opt to use it in some of your courses. While the idea of plagiarism detection software makes many students nervous, if your professors activate Turnitin, it can be a useful tool as you work with sources in your writing. Your professors may encourage you to submit your own work and see your own originality report. In this way, you can often identify areas that need more extensive rewriting to avoid patch writing or plagiarism. Here are a few additional reminders. Carefully review the rules for quoting and paraphrasing in the APA handbook or on a reputable site such as OWL Purdue. If you are confused by APA rules, please consult our APA module. Please note that like text, images you find in articles, websites, books, etc. usually need to be cited. Here you see listed the sources used in the preparation of this presentation, documented in APA style. If you are interested, please consult them to find out more about the ethical use of academic sources. Moving past the need to patch write is not something most people can do all at once. Like any aspect of learning, it takes practice. Remember, however, that the university has resources that can provide help. You're not alone. Last, it's important to realize that learning to understand complex sources and handling them responsibly and ethically in your work are skills that contribute to your ultimate membership in the wider academic community.